All right, today we're gonna check out this RCA Outdoor Attic Yogi Style TV Antenna. This is the 7.5 model from RCA, and this has gone through a few version changes. Currently, the newest one is the ANT 754. This one is the ANT 752, and as far as I can tell, the only difference between this one and the newer 754 is that there is a next-gen logo on the box. Now, just for comparison's sake, here is an original antenna model here. This is the ANT-751. This one has a slightly longer boom. It also has an extra set of VHF elements, and the boom is also one piece. This one here, the boom is two pieces, and the location of the mast clamp is different. It's on the end here, whereas this one is more towards the middle. Be aware that the current version of this antenna has fewer elements than pictured on the box. The images on the box are of the older model that has four sets of VHF elements. The current models of this antenna have three sets of VHF elements, and there's a picture in the manual that confirms this. All the usual 4K, 8K, Ultra HD, 1080 promises you see on most TV antenna packaging nowadays. Although it's always worth noting, there are no 4K broadcasts, and who knows if there ever will be. RCA offers this free Signal Finder app that can help you find local broadcast TV stations in your area. To my surprise, I was able to download this app even in Canada, although when I entered my location, the app had trouble recognizing where I was. There's always some catch to living in Canada. And like other versions of this antenna, it always comes with a mounting arm. This is actually the exact kind of arm you'd find with any satellite dish and all of the included hardware. I won't be using that today because I'm going to be putting this on a mask, but definitely a good feature. Size-wise, this would be considered a small to medium outdoor antenna. The boom measures 31 inches long and the widest elements at the back are 34 inches. There are a series of smaller elements on the front of the antenna. These are known as directors, and these direct the signal to these elements here, which capture the UHF TV stations broadcasting on RF channels 14 to 36. And at the back, these longer elements are for VHF channels 7 through 13. VHF channels transmit on much longer wavelengths and therefore require longer elements. As I said, the boom is in two pieces. It bolts together right here with a through bolt. Here's the 75 ohm connector. Not a fan of these wires hanging down. You could certainly tape that on there with some electrical tape or a zip tie. The mast clamp here is nice and heavy. It's riveted to the boom. All of the elements are riveted tightly to the boom as well. Phasing lines are nice and wide. Overall, this antenna is a good build quality. It's very rugged, should last many years in the elements. To test this RCA Yagi, I have it mounted on a mast 17 feet in the air, pointed in the direction of my local broadcast towers. All of the stations in my area broadcast on the VHF band on RF channels 2, 4, and 9. They transmit with low power levels, 1.2 and 4.5 kilowatts. And I'm about seven miles through the air from the broadcast towers. Let's go inside and check the signal strength. Looking at the results, RF channel two CKPR, broadcasting on low VHF channel two. Normally you'd need a much larger antenna with longer elements to receive this channel with such a good signal strength, but this antenna is getting the job done right around 70%. RF channel 4 CHFD, a little lower in the mid to high 60s, a stable signal though, and RF channel 9 TVO right in the wheelhouse of this antenna in the middle of the high VHF TV band, coming in with a nice strong signal in the low to mid 80s. For a comparative test, I put the original antenna model up on the mast right after testing the newer one. And RF channel 2 had a signal strength that was similar, maybe one or 2% higher. RF channel 4, no real discernible difference there. 
and RF channel 9 got the biggest boost probably from that extra VHF element with a signal strength in the mid to high 80s and even up into the 90s at times. Now even though I think they should have left that extra set of VHF elements on this antenna for a little extra gain, it is not going to make a difference in terms of picture quality with digital television. Having a signal strength in the high 80s compared to the low 80s is not going to give you a more crisp or clear picture. With digital TV, you either receive the signal or you don't. It's not like the days of analog TV where every little bit of gain would have helped to give you a more clear picture. With digital TV, the signal either comes in or it doesn't. Where a higher signal strength does help with digital TV is that it gives a channel a little more leeway from potentially dropping out due to some kind of signal disruption like a storm or some other interruption. Also keep in mind that the 75 mile reception range claim on the box has a little footnote beside it stating that this mileage is only possible if you use a pre-amplifier with this antenna which is sold separately. A more realistic mileage claim for just using the antenna on its own would probably be in the 35 to 40 mile range making this antenna suitable for a city or suburban reception area and of course that mileage rating may vary depending on the strength of the broadcast signals in your area along with any trees mountains hills or other obstructions nearby that might disrupt your tv signal 